Hello everyone, this is Danny from creatingawebstore.com and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to use FileZilla. FileZilla is actually a free FTP client that offers many advanced features and what's interesting about it is that you can actually download this client and use it for everything uh, that you need to upload files, rename uh, files, folders, create folders, uh, change permissions, you can basically do everything with FileZilla, it's actually quite amazing. So to download the client, simply go to filezilla-project.org and then simply download the version that's compatible with your computer. If you're on Windows, you're obviously going to want to download the Windows version. If you're on uh, Mac or Linux, you're going to want to go here for all platforms. In my case, I will be downloading the Mac version. Note that while I'm shooting this video on a Mac, the video will actually be very uh, useful for those of you that are on a Windows computer as well, since the FileZilla interface is practically the same for both uh, Windows and Mac. So simply download the client. So after FileZilla has finished downloading, if the file is archived, you're going to want to unarchive it. And after unarchiving and after installing FileZilla, simply launch the client. So next you will want to uh, connect to your host. In my case, I will just enter in my uh, domain. If you have an FTP URL, you're going to actually want to use that instead. For the username, simply enter in your username. And for the password, simply enter in your password. Note that you created this information while setting up your hosting account or server. If you don't recall creating this information, there are actually hosts that create this information automatically for you and they send this information in an email. So you will actually want to look through your emails and locate the information. For the port, you can leave it on the default, which is 21 for FTP or uh, 22 for SFTP. I'm just going to leave it empty and use a default. If this doesn't work for you, you're actually going to want to look in the help section of your host or through your emails and see which port they use. Note that there's also a way to actually save this information. For example, if you click on this icon right here, you can add multiple sites and automatically connect to them each time you use uh, FileZilla so you can actually organize yourself and not have to worry about entering in this sort of information each time you connect. And there's also a lot of uh, different settings that you can choose and you can even choose the transfer settings for example the transfer mode between active or passive or leave it on default so after connecting to your uh, server you will notice that there's uh, windows here on the left side as well as the right side this right here is your local computer and this is your remote server so to find files on your local computer you simply look through the directories uh, that you want to uh, access for example I want to uh, upload some images so I'm going to go into flags here and on my remote site I will simply uh, expand here and I will locate the directory that I want to upload to which in my case is public underscore HTML of course this directory may uh, be different on your server uh, so you will have to uh, decide on your own which directory you want to upload to after going within the directory, you will notice the directories and uh, files here, which is actually an up-close look of what's in this directory, which, where you can actually see the directories here as well, but this is an up-close look where you can actually see files. Note that you can actually expand the FileZilla and you can even move this so that you can see the files a bit better. So now uh, if you want to upload to your public underscore HTML, you simply make sure that the remote site path here is correct. For example, if you want to upload to store, you would make sure that store is visible here before actually uploading anything. In my case, I'm just going to upload to my uh, public uh, directory here. And then I go to the file that I want to upload and I right click and I left click on upload and now as you can see my uh, file has been uploaded my image file here and I can actually rename this file if I'd like like so now if I want to upload an entire directory I can just go back here like so and I can just uh, left click right click and then left click on upload to upload the entire directory and as you can see the directory is being uploaded and has been uploaded and now I can actually change the permissions of this directory by right clicking and left clicking on file permissions and for example I can change it say for example I want the 777 I would answer it like so and then I would click OK and if you want 
uh, all sub directories that are within that directory to also have 777 permissions you simply uh, check off this box to actually apply it to and then you choose whether you want to apply it to all files and directories or just to files or just to directories and then you click on OK and then everything within that directory will have the same permissions as well as you can see now if I wanted to create a directory within this directory I simply make sure that I'm in it and then or I can go here just make sure that it's this the path is displaying correctly and then I right click and left click on create directory I can for example enter in states and click OK and now that directory has been created and I can also change the permissions of this like so. In addition to that you can also drag the directory in it instead of right clicking and then left clicking on upload and you can also add to queue for example we can uh, go within states like so and then we can go to our directory here and I can right click and left click on add to queue and now if I also want to add a file from within here I can add this to queue as well and this is all displayed here as you can see in the list and then I simply go to transfer here and I left click on process queue and as you can see everything has been uploaded to my states including that green apple. Note that I can also move a file for example I can move this image to my flags directory by simply uh, left clicking and holding down and then dragging to flags and I simply moved it with just one uh, drag of a mouse button right here and now if I'd like I can actually upload a uh, directory for example say for example I have my flags directory say I move on my local computer a file so say now I want to upload this dandelion image to my flags directory but what I want to do is I actually want to upload this whole directory but without overriding any of the files that already exist what I do is I actually go back to my states here which is where the flags directory is located and then I go to my flags uh, directory here and I right click and I left click on upload and now it's actually going to ask me if I want to overwrite the existing files now if I click on uh, overwrite what's going to happen is if I have any modified uh, files within that directory those modified files will actually be overwritten by the older files that I have in this directory that I'm uploading from so instead what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to skip the alternative is you can actually choose to overwrite if uh, source newer or overwrite if different in size or overwrite if different size or source newer so again you will actually have to decide on your own and you could also have rename if you'd like and then you can also choose an action for example you can choose to apply this action only to current queue so now I click on OK and all those other files that already exist will be skipped and instead only that dandelion image was uh, uploaded. As for the default file exist actions you can actually set them by going to FileZilla and then preferences and then where it says transfers if you go to file exist actions you can actually uh, choose one for example if you can actually choose skip file so that it no longer asks for an action and then click OK and then when you close and then say for example let's close uh, FileZilla and restart it again and now when we go back in when we go to preferences and we go to file exist actions as you can see it will be skip file so now when we connect to our server so let's say now we wanted to uh, upload that directory to that other directory which we have with flags in it that doesn't contain that dandelion image 
what we do is we make sure that we're uploading to public because we want to actually uh, upload the flags directory but what we want to do is we only want to upload the dandelion image so what we do is we go back to flags here and we right click and then left click on upload and what happens is now it's actually going to skip all of the other uh, directories as for example it skipped this uh, states directory so it didn't overwrite it and it didn't actually delete anything all it did was add that dandelion image note that you can also change the default file exists action for the current session by going to transfer here and then going to default file exists action and changing it just remember that this setting is only for the current session so once you start a new session the changes will actually roll back to what they were before changing them so to make permanent changes you go to FileZilla here and then preferences and then you go to file exists action over here so now let's say we want to edit a file that's on our server so we go to the directory where that file is located which in my case is in public underscore HTML and then I simply locate the file for example it will be my index.php file and what I can do is I can either download it or I can go to view and edit here and then you can actually choose your editor for example you can use the default or you can use a custom program by going like so I'm actually going to show you both ways how you can download and then locate it on your computer or you can use this so I will just use the text edit app here and I will click OK and that file is actually being opened and here it is there's the file so now what I would do is I would actually make the changes to the file uh, say for example I want to comment this line out and then I save that file to a directory where I actually remember where uh, it would be located for example we can go to my documents here and I'm going to save it there and note that the file actually what it did is it actually remove my extension but I can fix this it's not a problem so I go back here to where my documents is I'm just going to change it here because it's faster for me to find and there's that index file but as you can see it was saved as uh, .txt so I'm actually going to rename the file to .php so now since I changed the default file exist action it will actually skip this file and it won't actually overwrite so what I have to do is I have to go back to transfer and I have to go to default file exist action and for upload I'm going to use overwrite only for this session so that I can actually overwrite that file that's already on my server and now I'm going to upload and now that file has been uh, overwritten so now when I view and edit so I'm actually going to discard the local file and just reopen the remote file to see the changes and as you can see the changes did take effect because that line was commented out so now I can also download the file though like so but see now again it was skipped because of my default file exists so I go back to transfer here and what I do is I go to overwrite again this is for this session just be careful when playing around with these overwrite uh, settings because you don't want to overwrite files that you actually want to keep so now I'm going to download once more and now I have this file on my local computer here which is in my documents so when I go here I will see it and this is another way that I can edit I can edit like so and now what I can do is I can actually save it like so and now this file is right here and now when I upload again and view and edit and I'm going to discard once more as you can see that line is no longer commented out so basically this is how FileZilla works so thanks for watching stay tuned for more videos and also be sure to check out creatingawebstore.com